and welcome to Adaptation, where we talk about film adaptations and the original material they're based on. I'm Kendall Bryant, and this week we're talking about Hairspray, because I just now got around to watching the original film. Don't judge me too harshly, it came out the year I was born. The story, in all its iterations, goes as follows. Tracy Turnblad, a teen in 1960s Baltimore, is obsessed with The Corny Collins Show, a local teen dance show. And she goes when they hold auditions, but she's laughed away because of her size, despite the fact that she's a pretty good dancer. Her skills do eventually get her noticed by Seaweed, a black dancer who's only allowed to be on the show on Negro Day, Corny Collins himself, and Link Larkin, the heartthrob of The Corny Collins Show. Corny does put her on the show, and she becomes very popular, despite the fact that Amber, Link's girlfriend, and her mother are trying to sabotage. Her. Tracy starts lobbying for the show to be integrated, but she gets into some trouble at a protest march, which results in her having to try and sneak into the station so she can dance for the Miss Hairspray contest. Her and Link then pull some of the black dancers into the live broadcast, and everything is solved with a final dance number. The original film came out in 1988 and was written and directed by John Waters, who grew up in Baltimore and was inspired by The Buddy Dean Show, a show that played instead of American Bandstand in Baltimore during the early 60s. The reason the station wouldn't air American Bandstand is because it had black dancers on it. The Buddy Dean show, just like in the Corny Collins show, had a day set aside every other week for just the black dancers, and the rest of the time featured only white dancers. The original film isn't a musical, but instead features real music from the time period, and has that kind of quirky, dark comedy feel that can take some getting used to. Because it gets real weird. For my first watch, I don't know that I liked it all that much. But Velma's big hair and the bug dress at the end kind of saved it for me. There were a couple of elements that I wish had been more obviously coded as problematic, but I'm not sure if that's the tone of the film, or the time period it came out in, or just me. The film was turned into a musical stage production in 2002, which won itself eight Emmys, including Best Musical. I've only seen it on stage once, but the movie musicals are pretty similar to it, with the exception of a couple songs that they swap out. The 2007 film, for example, cuts the big Dollhouse, Mama, I'm a Big Girl Now, and Cooties, and then adds back in The New Girl in Town, which was written but then cut from the original musical. Anna adds two new songs, Ladies' Choice and Come So Far, which is by far my favorite, despite the fact that it only appears in the credits. The musical still maintains some of the quirkiness from the original, but to me at least, the humor lands in a more natural way and the characters get a lot more fleshed out, too. They aren't as caricatured, and they get a lot more to do in terms of emotion. Queen Latifah especially is such a shining star in every bit of her performance. It also moderately fixes two of the issues I had with the original film, one being that Tracy steals Seaweed's dance. In the 2007 version, he gives her permission to use it to get on the Corny Collins show, and also the emphasis on hashtag free Tracy. Not that there's not still time devoted to freeing her, but it's much less, how dare they persecute Tracy, and much more, we need to get her back so she can continue to fight with us. On to the most recent adaptation, Hairspray Live appeared on NBC in December of 2016, and is the most recent, at least while I'm filming this, in a line of these live television musicals. I ended up liking this production. It had my favorite versions of Prudy Pingleton and Little Inez, but I did feel like it took the actors a little time to warm up. Toward the beginning, I found myself wishing that quite a few characters were going much bigger with their performances, and then slowly, each of them started to get more and more into it, and I ended up really liking everyone. The camera also stayed kind of far away for the actors for my taste. I kind of wanted to get in and see their expressions more, but you did get to see these great, amazing sets that they had built for the production. And the blocking was a little weird in some places. And I'm sorry, but I just can't get behind Jennifer Hudson trying to comfort Mrs. Turnblad with Big Blonde and Beautiful. Her voice is amazing, don't get me wrong, but considering the themes of the song, I think she was a little miscast. This was probably a more faithful adaptation of the stage production, but it just didn't reach my expectations. On that note, I am going to have to stick with the 2007 version as my favorite adaptation of Hairspray, but I think that's not really surprising considering it's the first one I saw and is probably one of my most listened to soundtracks. Let me know in the comments which is your favorite and what parts of each one you liked the best. I learned after watching all three of these that I've never met a Courtney Collins I didn't like. And while you're scrolling past the info section, do not forget to follow us on our other social media and check out our podcast on iTunes. There is a spontaneous episode we did on Grease Live a little while ago that you might be interested in. Until next time, remember, we have come so far, but we still have so far to go.